Good morning and welcome to our Church Online from Mount Zion United Methodist Church at Peach Bottom. I'm Pastor Roger Kresge, welcoming you to our online service this morning. Today is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost on the church calendar, and of course, oh, on a more secular basis, today is Halloween. But that's not a church holiday or a festival. We do recognize today as All Hallows Eve, which is kind of the basis for Halloween, and today we're celebrating All Saints Sunday, a day when we remember those who have gone before and who have moved on to their heavenly rewards. Now, we at Mount Zion do continue our weekly uh, on, uh, in-person worship on Sunday mornings in the church sanctuary at 11 a.m. Looking forward to seeing you there. If you would like to join us, we have some simple COVID guidelines. First, we're only asking those who have not been fully vaccinated to wear a mask. And second, if you're sick, especially with respiratory symptoms, we do ask you to stay home and participate online instead of joining us in person. Now, if you're not able to join us in person, we are continuing this weekly church online opportunity each Sunday morning at 11. And if you didn't know about it, we have a special message for young people, for children, right here on our church Facebook and YouTube video channels each Sunday at 12 noon. Now, those uh, both on Facebook and YouTube, they can be watched anytime after that as well, both the church service and the uh, young people's message. So you can watch it, you can share it, and we encourage you to do that. And, uh, and then toward the end of today's service online, we'll have some announcements about upcoming ministry opportunities and activities at Mount Zion. That'll be after today's message. But for now, let's open today's service with prayer. Lord God, we gather here this day in praise and thanksgiving for all the wonderful things you have done for us. Help us to be faithful disciples in all that we think, do, and say, that your great love may be revealed and offer healing to all people. Amen. epistle lesson for today is selected readings from Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. It's verses 1 through 3, 22 to 24, and then 28 to 29. I'll be reading from the contemporary English version of the Bible. The writer of Hebrews, which may or may not have been Paul, we're not totally sure, says in verse 1, such a large crowd of witnesses is all around us, so we must get rid of everything that slows us down especially the sin that won't let us go. And we must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us. We must keep our eyes on Jesus, who leads us and makes our faith complete. He, was, uh, he endured the shame of being nailed to a cross because he knew that later on he would be glad he did. Now he is seated at the right side of God's throne. So keep your mind on Jesus, who put up with many insults from sinners, and then you won't get discouraged and give up. Moving to verse 22. You have now come to Mount Zion and to the heavenly Jerusalem. This is the city of the living God where thousands and thousands of angels have come to celebrate. Here you will find all of God's dearest children whose names are written in heaven, and you will find God himself who judges everyone. Here also are the spirits of those good people who have been made perfect, and Jesus is here. He is the one who makes God's new agreement with us. And his sprinkling blood, his sprinkled blood, says much better things than the blood of Abel. In verse 28, we should be grateful that we were given a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And in this kingdom we please God by worshiping him and by showing him great honor and respect. Our God is like a destructive fire. And that is the word of God this morning for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We hope you find today's Church Online from Mount Zion United Methodist Church at Peach Bottom to be uplifting and helpful. If you've been blessed by today's message and Church Online worship, please share it with others. 
And be sure to like and follow our Facebook page to make it easier to be notified of our weekly updates. Your faithful and prayerful stewardship giving helps support the mission and ministry of Mount Zion, especially as we deal with the COVID pandemic. You're welcome to use our online giving tool for your weekly tithes and offerings and special gifts. It's easy and it's secure, so you can safely use your debit or credit card. The link to that is here on the screen. It's also on our church website and Facebook page. Of course, you can send a check by mail to Mount Zion. Please don't send cash using our mailing address that's on the screen. When you do, please remember to include Post Office Box 263. Blessings and thank you. We come to our time of prayer this morning, and I'm going to offer a special prayer commemorating, celebrating, recognizing All Saints Sunday. And then we'll move from there to our pastoral prayer. First, a prayer for All Saints Day. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness, and their faithfulness to your honor and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. In our pastoral prayer this morning, we'll give you an opportunity to lift up names and situations that uh, that are on your heart near the end of the prayer. Lord, we have a tendency to wander in wildernesses of our own creating. When opportunities to serve you and to make commitments to your service are given, we consult our calendars to see if there's anything else we have to do. We place our needs and our schedules before our service to you. Help us to reorder our priorities. Help us to look again at the wonderful opportunities you give us to be of service to you by working with others, reaching out to heal and to help. Bring us to the light of your love once again and heal our wounded souls. Let us love you truly with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give us courage and persistence as disciples that your great love and glory may shine through our deeds of loving kindness. And now, Father God, we lift up the names and situations that are on our hearts, both joys and concerns that we want to bring before your throne of grace this morning, as we do now in silence. And we ask all these things in the name of Christ Jesus, your precious Son. Amen. One of the teachers of the Law of Moses came up while Jesus and the Sadducees were arguing. When he heard Jesus give a good answer, he asked him, What is the most important commandment? Jesus answered, The most important one says, People of Israel, you have only one Lord and God. You must love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second most important commandment says, Love others as much as you love yourself. No other commandment is more important than these. The man replied, Teacher, you are certainly right to say there is only one God. It is also true that we must love God with all our heart, mind, and strength and that we must love others as much as we love ourselves. These commandments are more important than all the sacrifices and offerings that we could possibly make. When Jesus saw that the man had given a sensible answer, he told him, You are not far from God's kingdom. After this, no one dared ask Jesus any more questions. 
And that's the word of God for the people of God this morning. Thanks be to God. I'm going to ask you now to pray with me. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, the title of today's message is, Can I Get a Witness? And that comes from the epistle lesson we read earlier from the book of Hebrews. Now, I mentioned earlier that also that uh, today is All Saints Sunday. Yes, I know, it's Halloween. All the kids are in their, maybe adults too, are in their costumes, or also known as All Hallows Eve, which is what Halloween is actually a contraction of. But I don't want to get scared by that one. Ha uh ha. -huh. John Wesley, kind of the founder of Methodism, wrote once that All Saints Day is a festival I truly love. And today we see All Saints Day as an opportunity to give thanks for those who have gone before us in the faith. A time to celebrate our history and what United Methodists call the tradition of the church. And speaking of tradition... You know, this week is actually a really big one in the history of the church. Yes, friends, it was on this very day, October 31st, 1517. What happened? You got it? All right, you got it. Martin Luther. He kicked off the Protestant Reformation by posting his 95 theses on a church door in Wittenberg, Germany splitting the church and starting a new denomination outside the Catholic Church was not his intention, trust me. Rather, his goal was to reform the church. He was especially upset about the idea of uh, priests selling what were called indulgences, and that was a concept that theoretically allowed a person to uh, buy a reduced punishment for their sins in this world. And, of course, that whole idea is not supported by Scripture, but it sure did fatten up the church treasury in those days. No matter what, though, this event, the 95 Theses, led to the formation of what we know today as the Lutheran Church. And then um, this past Wednesday also marked the 250th anniversary of Francis Asbury's arrival in America, October 27th, 1771. Now, if you've studied Methodist history at all, you know that John uh, Wesley sent Asbury to America to lead Wesley's followers here. This guy traveled all over the colonies, uncounted miles, almost all of it on horseback, as we see here. Uh, reports are that he preached something more than 16,000 sermons. He was busy. He eventually became one of the first two bishops of the Methodist Episcopal Church in 1784. And he led that denomination for over 30 years until his death in 1816. As of the church's founding in 1784, by the way, there were about 1,200, count that, 1,200 Method, uh, Methodists in America. But by the time of Asbury's death in 1816, there were something like 215,000 Methodists, and it would continue to grow after that. you got to consider that Asbury's ministry was maybe somewhat successful, right? Wow. Now, Luther and Asbury are just two of the literally millions of saints who have gone on to glory throughout the 2,000-plus year history of the church. And today, we celebrate the witness, the witnesses, who have testified of their faith from the very beginning. The writer of Hebrews, and I do say it that way because Bible scholars aren't sure who that was, could have been the Apostle Paul, but the uh, latest thinking is no. But Hebrews says we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, the saints who have gone on to glory. Now, even today, here at Mount Zion, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses ourselves, without whom some of us would never have learned to know and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. There are names on the windows, on the plaques. Their names are engraved on our hearts. You can't. There are names that you just cannot pastor at Mount Zion without hearing. Uh, 
going back to the history of Mount Zion, very beginning, there's a name like Alexander Shank, who, according to our church history, he spearheaded the project of the first church building here in the village of Fairfield back in 1835. Or William Wesley. I'm not sure he's any relation to John Wesley, but William Wesley was a member of Mount Zion. And he chaired the building committee that rebuilt the church from scratch after the 1950 fire burned it to the ground. His name is on Wesley Hall downstairs. You've named in your hearts, of those of you who are involved with Mount Zion, you've named some of those saints who lived more recently. Now, it's not important what we call this day, All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' Sunday, even Halloween. What is important is the history and the tradition of this church as we continue to witness to our faith. So today I ask you, can I get a witness? Now we're going to turn to today's gospel lesson. And friends, this one's a doozy. Uh, I often tell you that when you read a Bible passage, you had better read also at least the chapter before along with it so you can understand the context of what's going on. In this case, you can start in Mark 11 and start with Jesus' entry into Jerusalem riding a donkey and Palm Sunday. Now, that's what we call it today. That, that event got the attention of the Jewish leaders of the day and they were not happy campers, let me tell you. And then the next day, Jesus went into the temple and he chased out the money changers. Shades of Martin Luther. But by that time, the bigwigs, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law of Moses were spitting nails. They were looking for ways, literally, to kill Jesus. And then the real fun, if you want to call it that, uh, started on the third day. I mean, almost, this, this starts sounding like a, uh, like a WFC tag team grudge match. First, at the end of chapter 11... Jesus outsmarted the chief priests and their pals when they tried to challenge his authority to do all this stuff. And then at the beginning of chapter 12, Jesus told the crowd a story that basically called out the leaders of Israel as the bad guys they really were. And if you thought they were mad before, check this out. That prompted the Pharisees, the Jewish leaders, to get together with a bunch of King Herod's followers so that they could cook up another plot to discredit Jesus. Now, you need to understand that these guys normally wouldn't even give each other the time of day. One source I read said jokingly that they wouldn't give each other a Band-Aid to cover up a bullet wound. Anyway, they put their collective heads together and they worked up a plan to uh, try to trip up Jesus with logic puzzles. Logic. Shades of Mr. Spock. But it didn't matter how clever they were. Jesus tripped them up with a great response. I mean, he just shredded them. And in public. So while that gang was licking their wounds after a very public smackdown, here came the Sadducees. And the priests and Herod's gang tagged them into the ring. Good luck with that, guys. And then Jesus just plain sliced, diced, and julienned the sneaky argument that the Sadducees tried to pull on him. If you're keeping track, that's round three here. So here were the chief priests, the nation's leaders, a bunch of Herod's followers, and now this group of Sadducees. And they were all knocked out of the ring and licking their wounds. So while they're all panting and catching their breath and applying bandages, uh, one teacher of the law of Moses was, was actually so impressed by Jesus. And this, this is where, by the way, this is where today's gospel lesson started. Um, he was so impressed by the answers that Jesus was giving to all these challengers that he, uh, he decided to ask Jesus a question of his own. He said, what is the greatest commandment? Now remember, this guy was a teacher of the law of Moses too. And he knew all of the commandments. You can count on that. He knew them all in detail. But pay attention here. Mark does not describe this the same way he described those previous challenges. Jesus treated this new guy with respect. It seemed that he was actually asking a legitimate question. In effect, Jesus said to him, Good question, I'm glad you asked. 
Now, I'm going to be blunt here. I am going to be blunt. Most of us don't know the Old Testament well enough to even begin to understand Jesus' answer to this guy. And that includes me, until I did a little research on this. Jesus began his answer with the words of the Shema, which is, oh, that's, it's only the most important prayer in Judaism. It comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, where uh, we read, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And with these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. Now, that's the words of the Shema. I'm going to ask you if you've ever visited a Jewish home. I have. And there's a little box high up on the right side of almost every door frame in a Jewish home. It's called a mezuzah. Now, the box itself is not important. It's what's inside. You'll find a small scroll with the words of the Shema. Our Jewish friends touch that box when they pass through the door as a reminder that God is always with us. And observant Jews pray the Shema at least twice a day. This prayer is written on their hearts. Now Jesus reaffirmed for this guy everything that he had been taught. And then he added part two of his answer by saying, love others as much as you love yourself. This questioner didn't respond by giving Jesus a passing grade for having the right answer. No, he was delighted to hear Jesus confirm what he truly believed in his own heart. And that's why Jesus told him, you are not far from God's kingdom. There were no more questions that day. The tag team wrestling match was over. Jesus had just given him his questioner, that whole crowd, a glimpse of eternal and heavenly glory. Game set and match to Jesus. The referee slapped his hand down on the canvas. Now, wouldn't you love to hear that from Jesus? You are not far from the kingdom. Jesus came to seek the lost and the least, to gather them and us, close to him. You and I should want to be near, close to the kingdom, close to the hope, the joy that, that only comes from Jesus. But remember, if you want to get that close, you have to give yourself completely to Jesus. Go all out. Give your life totally to him. With all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, Jesus said. That's all he wants from us, everything we have. No holding something back in reserve, just in case. No crossed fingers. All in for Jesus. So today, as we celebrate the saints who have gone before, that great cloud of witnesses that the writer of Hebrews wrote about, those who, through the centuries and in our lifetimes, have given their all. They are examples for us to follow. Today we can and should give thanks for these saints of God, not because they were perfect, far from it, none of us are, but because of the example of their lives, their struggles, their successes. Because of that, we can run the race ourselves and keep our eyes on Jesus our Savior, our Master, Guide, and Friend. And together God's people say, Amen. I'll be back in a moment with some announcements about things coming up at Mount Zion, uh, ministry opportunities, other church activities. But first, receive this blessing and benediction before we go today. The pathway is open before you this day. It is a path of peace and hope, brought to others by God's mighty love and wondrous blessings. Go in peace, 
bringing hope to all that you meet. Go, blessed ones, to serve God all your days. Amen. Okay, it's announcements time. I remind you of this every week. Uh, if you've got children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, we've got a special online message for young people, and not so young people, every Sunday at 12 noon right here on our church Facebook and our uh, YouTube video channels. The cool thing, your children and your grandchildren, whatever, can watch it any time after that. It doesn't have to be Sunday at noon. And that makes it easy to share the videos with your online friends. That's pretty cool, and we ask you to do that, please. Some other announcements of things coming up. Today, I, I know it's uh, maybe a little late for some, but today we're having, right after our in-person worship, a potluck luncheon. Yay, they're coming back. And after we eat, we're going to have a, a little craft activity. We're going to make some more chrismons for our new Christmas tree that we'll be putting up in just a few weeks. This coming Wednesday evening is our church, our annual charge conference. It starts at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday at Stamen Memorial Church right outside Millersville. And we do ask all of our Mount Zion Church leaders to attend and participate. Thank you. Now, I intended to have a slide about this, but it's a reminder. Don't forget Daylight Savings Time ends Next Sunday, November 7th at 2 in the morning. So remember to set your clocks back. Remember spring ahead, fall back. Set your clocks back one hour before you go to bed Saturday night next week, okay? Don't want you to be too early to church. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm looking ahead at the calendar, and I see that our annual Hanging of the Greens that I mentioned earlier, that worship service is fast approaching. That'll be on Sunday, November 21st. Purpose, uh, Purses for a Purpose is coming up. We have handbags, uh, empty handbags, under the table in our church hallway. I want you to start thinking about gathering stuff to put in them for the uh, Women's Overnight Shelter in Lancaster. We did this last year. We'll do it again this year. We will deliver those purses to the shelter with the week of December 12th. I'll have a list for you shortly of the things that we recommend and request that you put in those. Uh, you can't just drop them off yourself. Got to bring them to the church with the stuff in them. Uh, next, we are continuing. Yay! We're continuing our Sunday morning study series called Living in Joy. That's based on the book of Philippians. Starting time is 10.10 each Sunday for several weeks. That's still going on. This coming uh, Saturday, we're going to have our monthly Impact Missions Work Day. That'll be Saturday, November the 6th. Each month we get together to help people have warm, safe, and dry living conditions, working with our friends from Impact Missions. And this month we do hope to finish building a handicapped access ramp for a Quarryville family in need. If you'd like to help, no matter what our project is, if you'd like to help, you don't have to be a tremendously skilled carpenter or anything like that. We train, and you don't have to be a man. This is, this is a ministry that is open to men, women, youth, whatever. But give me a call, send me a text, send me an email to let me know you want to help. We will work from 9 to 1 that day, Saturday, November the 6th. And at Rollinsville Camp Meeting, they're having their annual soup sales. The order deadline is actually today. All the soup is now made 
And uh, the pickup date is Saturday, November 13th. Yay! Look forward to that. The fall cleanup at Rollinsville Camp Meeting is coming up on Saturday, November 13th. And uh, that's for anyone who would like to help out. And remember that Solanco Neighborhood Ministries is always glad for your food donations so they can help feed families in in need, thanks to the corona pand- coronavirus pandemic and other economic issues. But right now they're also asking us to help provide a Thanksgiving dinner box it's all the fixings need for a, needed for a complete Thanksgiving dinner for a family who won't otherwise be able to have one. And we will post details about that on our church website. That's our announcements for this morning. I can't think of anything else that I need to bring up for the good of the order. And uh, so we'll look forward to seeing you uh, in person uh, or here online next Sunday morning, 11 o'clock at Mount Zion United Methodist Church at Peach Bottom. A little hard to find, but it is worth it. And we'll look forward to seeing you then. Until we see you next week, just have a wonderful and blessed week. Go now in peace. Amen.